Quick Diz News is part of the Quick Diz Takes family of podcasts. Hello, I'm Michael Eisner. Oh boy. What's up, guys, and welcome to Quick Diz News, episode number nine, I believe. I'm your host, Tim Lebeau, here alongside me as usual, Mr. John Castano. Hello. And Mrs. Sarah Castano. Hey, howdy, hey. So this week, I have just been informed prior to the show that we do not have any quick mentions. So without further ado, I guess we will go right into just basically two main stories, I guess, Sarah, is that, is that what? We have correctly? two brief updates and then we can get into the stories. Just okay. a little bit of an appetizer. So we get some brief updates. So our first update is that we do have some entertainment back. A celebration of Festival of the Lion King, something we had spoken about a couple of weeks ago, has officially made it soft open this week with park goers lining up, socially distanced, of course, to see the show in its newest form. So we did have a, maybe about four or five live streams of the new show from different um, times that were being performed. And um, it gave kind of park goers the opportunity to share the new entertainment in the park, the new iteration that's being put forward for guests, as well as it gave the opportunity for people who aren't at the parks right now to be able to see it and kind of get that little piece of Disney at home. Nice. And now I heard people were waiting like obnoxious amounts of time to get out to watch Festival of the Lion King. I did happen to catch one of the recordings of someone who live streamed and they said that they were in the area and were in the line queue. Like the cast members wouldn't let them physically in the line at 9 a.m. But that's when they got there prepared to wait for the 1230 show. They got there at 9 a.m which I enjoy that show, but that seems a bit excessive for me. Yeah, th- this is like just begging for Angry Tim to come out. I'm not gonna, <laughs> I was, there's no way, I'm not gonna get angry about it, but there's no way I would wait that. I like the rest of the Lion King, but like, that's crazy. People um, just had to be the first one to post it online. That's all that was. Yeah, it's a show that's yeah. a good show. Absolutely. But man, not just sitting there like three hours ahead, with three hours ahead of you just saying, I'm just gonna sit here until the show starts. And no. I mean, I guess if you, it, what do you do? If you, live down, if you live down there, I guess I could see that maybe. Maybe. You do it for a living. I could see that maybe. Like if I lived down there and that was part of our content, maybe I would do that. I would never do it going down there on vacation. I was just going to say, if it's part of your shows. actual vacation, please don't do that. <laughs> it's just, it's good people, but it's not that good. Right. I mean, I'm curious. I didn't watch the whole live stream just because I had a bajillion other things I should have been doing instead of watching what I did watch. Um, so I am curious to see what the new version of it looks like, the kind of tribute to it or celebration of it, I should say. Um, but I wouldn't camp out for three hours on my vacation before the show. I couldn't just, just come up with some kind of like te- pass, virtual pass system or something, but that's crazy. Like they couldn't just hand out, like you get into the line and like three hours before, like, all right, you guys are good for the 12 o'clock show. Here's your two hard tickets or whatever, whoever your party is, come back. Why would they, why would they want or say, come back gather. at 11 for the 1230 show. Yeah, that's nuts. Yeah, little little silliness, but people are excited. I get it. And it's not, even, I don't know. It's not even the whole show. Like, it's not even like it's original. Right. It's, it's dumbed down in some ways, basically what I'm saying. So, I mean, I'm glad it's back, but I'll tell you what, I'll be there this weekend and I am not waiting for it. <laughs> I am not willing to wait for it, Aaron Burr. Sir. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Johnny hates it, but he knows the song. I don't. He does. Know that. I don't know that one. Mm-hmm. The children sing it constantly in the car. One has to be Burr, the other has to be Hamilton. Okay, but Except I don't know. It, I, watch okay. it. Move on. I know they sing it, but I don't know the words. I, I only know like the king, like when the king sings. That's the only song I know. Mm-hmm. Don't change that. <laughs> you you too will be a Hamilton fan. You haven't changed it so far. A Hamilton fan. All right, all right. Our I need other a Hamilton soundbite. Anyway, go ahead. Work. 
Our other update is also about a show, the Nighttime Spectacular, being planned for Epcot. Harmonious has some additional progress being made. Uh, Several guests in the parks have reported not only are the barges testing their fountains and other water features during the day, but some people have even reportedly heard the soundtrack playing overnight. So new video footage is being put up on social media by guests in the park with nighttime tests with the water and music, but never the full soundtrack or the full showing, just kind of the same tests run repeatedly. Um, The three semicircular arms are fully functioning. They're more mobile now from what we've seen in previous tests. They're creating new patterns of water from what we've seen before. And it's just kind of adds to the excitement about that return to normal and getting the nighttime show, which means even if it's socially distanced, we're going to have that entertainment back at night. So just a little something to kind of update us and keep us going. So when when Harmonious goes into full swing is the those barges are just gonna always be out there like that like how many of those are gonna yeah. be able to come in and out do we know i don't think any can come in and out oh boy so from what i've seen there's a main barge that has a the ring the barge circle. is what they call it um and there are two semicircular. no there's like four or five of those i meant on the same as the ring barge. So there's two semicircular arms at the bottom of the ring barge, and then there oh, are okay. I think, four other barges That's obnoxious. in the lagoon. Yeah. So people had put up some pictures on Facebook of a couple of the groups that I'm in. They were testing the fountains during the day, which is kind of cool to see. But between all of the fountains, and I don't know if it was just a windy day or testing feature or whatever, it definitely made like a hazy look you can't look across the lagoon anymore it's not just like a stationary fountain like you would see in the moroccan pavilion it definitely obscures your view of the other side of the pavilion which is kind of a bummer because i like being able to look across and see the other parts so it's definitely an adjustment for people and you know it's very annoying too i saw pictures that if you're walking directly in behind spaceship earth walking straight into and looking across at the American pavilion. The ring is not centered on the American pavilion. It's slightly off because supposedly where the fast pass section is going to be over to the right, it's centered to the fast pass section, which is, I hope, I don't know if that's officially set in stone or if it's set where it's supposed to be, but if it's not, that's very annoying that it's catering to like that section instead of catering towards your view of world showcase my type a personality is not like that at all yeah maybe you won't be able to tell with the fountains going off but with this with the big circle you can definitely tell i yeah but now that i know i have to look for it and i'm gonna i'm pre-annoyed and supposedly like (laughs) these barges are sitting coming out (laughs) the barges are sitting up high too which is something they're supposed i guess they're gonna submerge a little bit more Supposedly. I'm going to trust them, but things aren't looking so, things, it's kind of, they're doing some weird stuff. Yeah, maybe the, well, you wonder if they, you know, it's probably ambitious. The show's probably ambitious because mm-hmm. a lot of those things they do now are ambitious. They've always done ambitious stuff, but you know what I mean? But anyway, right. and maybe like by the time they actually got to the, to laying it out in reality, it wouldn't be the first time that Disney has gotten ambitious. And then when, when the time came, they were, like, oh boy, you know, i.e. rocket rods or, or whatever that parade was that there in the late 90s that Eisner had going on in Disneyland was a disaster, things like that. So I don't know, maybe maybe it will be an eyesore. They should, they had it right with illuminations to clear that out mm-hmm. during the day. Also, like Sarah said, at night, I always enjoyed, you, know, you watching the show, but you you know, your eyes are drifting. It's always cool to just look at the whole landscape of, of yeah. yeah. That skyline at night is beautiful. Yeah. And just the plain white, like the warm white bulbs, just it was so simple but nice. Yeah, but it's it, one of the better things in Disney, like as far as visuals go. Yeah. I would I say. I don't think they care as much about sight lines and all that stuff anymore. Like would they, <laughs> no, they would don't they, seem to would they take the time now? to paint the Tower of Terror, the same paint scheme as Morocco, 
because like now like you're in toy story land you can see galaxies at like you're supposed to be in a backyard but i can see get they didn't even try to you know they don't even try to like hide things anymore it's just kind of let's i mean obviously galaxy's edge is immersive when you're in galaxy's edge it's good because everything's high but like they seem to focus on that property to make it but then they don't care about toy story i was just gonna say do you think they were too focused on making galaxy's edge so well done that they just kind of forgot it about at other properties it didn't even seem difficult to hide out like if they just put a little more effort into it they could have done it too yeah you probably, like it was that crazy you've probably only seen it when you're on like slinky dog which is mm-hmm. understandable but like when you're in that land you should i mean take bring the the grass stuff over from the the bugs land that they had in disney world put that all of the on the outside make it seem like you're in the back i don't know just seems like they'll no you're right they just lazy they jump, tendencies they've jumped ship on that i think which because is, look at guardians that doesn't look like it's going to be I mean, I don't know what's going to be doing, like what's going to look like when it's finished, but it doesn't look like they're they're making zero effort to hide any of the any construct. Like the building is just there. Yeah, it's huge. It's blue. I don't. I I have a hard time like imagining what they're going to really be able to do to hide that building. Because you look at Aerosmith, that's that's hidden well to me. At least I don't notice it. I mean, I know it's, it's been brought up and I've seen it once it's been brought up kind of thing, but I've never noticed it on my own. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's like, like you said, forget about it. So now it's like, let's just make this awesome show and it probably will be good, but who cares what it looks like, what we have to throw in the water to make it make it happen. I don't know. Maybe when the fountain, I mean, when the fountains are on, I don't think you're going to see it at all. But the only thing is, do you, I mean, fountains are fine, but do you want to look at fountains all day? I'd rather have a clean view across the thing. So I was hopeful about these fountains kind of not hiding it, but kind of helping or enhancing. And from what it looked like, one of the barges that people put pictures up this week literally looks like um, at a concert, those big pillars on the side of the stage that have just like the lights and multiple speakers in them. And it just has fountains going straight up. So I'm a little, little nervous, Nelly, about this. It's gonna, it's a, I think it's gonna be, as far as visuals, it's gonna be bad. <laughs> I don't think they're gonna get. I don't think it's gonna get any better. I think they, they're hoping the show is gonna be awesome at night, and then, and I think personally, you should hide the show in the day. Mm-hmm. And then like that makes it even more interesting. And it's like all of a sudden the show comes out at night, and you don't, you don't even see it coming. Like kind of like when they do projections on anything really, but like when they started doing shows on the Chinese theater. It just kind of came to life. You didn't mm-hmm. really see what was making it happen. I mean, not too too blatantly anyway. Or like Fantasmics tucked away in the back or all that stuff. But this one's like, look at all this machinery. And later on, we're going to use it. I don't know. We've got a little um, crazy. Epcot's Sorry, probably the most... You could argue it's the most beautiful park. At least, at least back there. Yep. No, I don't know. Wow. Anyway. That lagoon, man. I don't know. Yep. What's up, guys? It's Tim. Just here to remind you to check out our new website, quickdiztakes.com. We cover everything Disney, from our newest videos to our newest podcast, blog posts by contributors, and much more. And while you're there, do not forget to subscribe for the latest notifications on when new blog posts are posted and new videos go up. Of course, check out our YouTube page, Quick Diz Takes, and our Facebook page, Quick Diz Takes, along with Twitter, at Quick Diz Takes for me, and at Palm Tree Skook for Sarah, Instagram, at Quick Diz Takes Tim, and at Quick Diz Skook. And of course, if you like this, please like, share, and subscribe with friends. Thanks for listening, and now back to the show. All right, so we do have two newsworthy articles, um, both coming out today, I believe. So Disney CEO Bob Chapek spoke at its quarterly earnings meeting, um, and he kind of talked about the CDC's shift on their recommendations for mask wearing guidance, um, kind of showing the promise of a more enjoyable experience at the parks. 
He did show that the updated reports from the CDC that vaccinated people can, and I quote, abandon masks in most outdoor and indoor settings is a sign for the better and is promising for park attendance as well as calling additional cast members back to work. So Chapek went on to say the relaxation of the mask wearing policies by fully vaccinated people would only make for an even more pleasant experience citing the summer heat further exacerbated by wearing a mask and would be an even bigger catalyst for growth in attendance. Chapek did not, however, address their current policy regarding the masks or if it would be reconsidered anytime soon. So it's kind of a big piece. They're going to have to roll. They, they have no choice but to roll it out slowly no matter what. So let's say like they took the CDC's advice and tomorrow they were like, yep, let's do it. They can't. It'd be like a madhouse. So they're going to have to like just work either no matter what they, they, they're going to have to work their way into it. 35%, maybe 45% until they can get back, I, I think. We went in July when they had first reopened and we had the dual layer cloth masks. We didn't use the paper masks and it wasn't unbearable. I mean, we generally go in July or August when it's super hot and we made it out alive. I mean, by the time it was getting a bit uncomfortable, we were sitting down for lunch or we were, you, there's relaxation areas. It's not like it's, you know, unbearable. Yep. I mean, so. don't get me wrong. I would love it if I didn't have to wear one outside. Right. But, but the paper masks are the disposable ones. I shouldn't say paper. The disposable masks are lighter and they're more breathable. Yeah, that's what I'm going to get. I go. Cloth mask. And then you can just, you can always do a little, everyone does a little, grab the bottoms, give a quick little, little pull out and take a quick breath if you, or whatever, if, you, if you're having a, you know, if it's Please bothering you. Yeah pull over to the side and take your mask off to take a sip of your water bottle. Yeah, you can do that too. But I think at this point, we're close. Yeah. It's, this is the point of getting the vaccinations out is to remove these things, so it's a nice step. Well, yeah, they, it was it was a little bit frustrating for a little while. I was like, vaccine, vaccine, vaccine. And then I was like, you have vaccine, but you, know, you still can't necessarily do this. And mm-hmm. I'm like, and then, and then he gives us really any answer. And I was like, well, what's the deal? <laughs> Are we going to be, is this not going to be a vaccine? Still wait two years? Then all of a sudden, boom, this news today. And it's like, yeah. okay, so it is going the right way. The only thing with it too is it's it's saying vaccinated people. So like. Fully. And, yeah, fully vaccinated. So then it's like, like, how do you, you take people's word for it? I mean, how do you full, like, that's the. I think that might take a little time to figure out how to can they ask and say, can they say you need to show your vaccination card before you can take your mask off. If you show your card, you get a special wristband saying you are a vaccinated person or can people just who didn't get vaccinated say I've been vaccinated and they accept that. That's, that's the weird middle ground. Like they got to even, even that Johnny doesn't really matter because Let's say they do that as far as letting, unless they only let, well, unless they only let vaccinated people in it all, all together. Mm-hmm. So I was going to say, because once you're in, how do they know what happened at the gate, you know? But I guess, yeah, I guess you would have to be only vaccinated people ever. And I guess you could maybe create a system on the app where, or on the My Disney Experience, where you had, you could punch the, the, your card number in and prove your vaccination there and they'll be on your wristband. I, I don't know. Somewhere right. Down. I was thinking there would be, I mean, optional because we do know there are, you is know. That, is that HIPAA violate HIPAA. like that HIPAA law? Like again, right. for medical, right? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. There was talk right. about when concerts start up again, companies are only going to say vaccinated people are only allowed in the venues. Like how does, how do you enforce that? That's a weird. It gets to like personal preference on things like that. I don't mm-hmm. know. You're right. I mean, I was kind of it feels very nice. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, sorry. Oh, I was going to say there's an optional thing where you could upload that information, like you were saying, put that card information into your My Disney experience, since most people have that in the parks anyway. But then how would cast members, you know, know to approach you? So right now they have cast members reminding guests to socially distance and reminding guests to pull their masks up over their nose. But what would be the signal? They're not going to go up to people, scan their bands and go, okay, you check out. Thank you. Have a good day. Yeah, it's, I don't know. I think at this point, it's going to be an all or nothing until. Yeah, I think so, because you can't put that burden on a cast member to go up to somebody and say, why don't you have a mask on? And then you have to say, so I'm vaccinated. Or how do you decipher if they really like you're putting, you can't put that burden on the cast member. 
I mean, they're getting, they're getting spit on now. Like people mm -hmm. are getting mystery. Like you can, and then now with this removal of the mass, that puts even more burden on these people who just have to enforce the, the, the rules. They don't make them. So it's, yep. it's terrible. It's weird. It's, it's, it's honestly terrible because I got a vaccine. I wasn't against it or anything, but I understand if people don't want to get them, I, I do understand that. It's mm -hmm. the first time I've, I've been around where people are just like, where it's been a situation where, you know, you're, you're being pushed one way medically or asked in public very openly, you know, what, what you did. I, I don't know. It is what it is. At the same time, it is what it is. What are you going to do? Right. So in related news, Disney adjusts their six foot social distancing requirements in select locations. So kind of connected to the CDC's remarks about relaxing mask policies, Disney has updated their website in respect to their policy on guiding principles for safety. So previously, their website specifically noted a distance of six feet or two meters when providing guidance on visuals for their safety policies during the reopening following COVID closures from 2020. Not only is that text taken away from the visual, but new wording on their website has also been updated. The website now states that temporary adjustments are still in place to promote physical distancing. While we reduce physical distancing measures for guests across many areas with a gradual, phased approach, six feet distancing measures will continue in all dining locations, merchandise stores, and in areas where guests can temporarily remove their masks. So they gave a couple examples about what physical distancing may include. Um, and they gave the points of signage and ground markings. So any directional signage, if it's a one way to walk within a store or ground markings and queue lines, physical barriers that include plexiglass and queues on any transportation or attractions, as well as the register areas in uh, stores. They do ask that party sizes that guests in group of more than 10 people are asked to split into smaller parties for dining purposes and while in queues to more closely adhere to physical physical distancing guidelines. They ask that cashless payments are recommended for the parking and that all cast members have been trained to engage with guests to promote physical distance guidelines guide in common areas and queues. So even when we've been there in um, the summer and again at Christmas, we did see cast members speaking to guests to kind of enforce those physical distancing or to enforce wearing the masks up over their mouth and nose appropriately. Um, so I guess they're just kind of retraining the staff. I had read an article that um, kind of corroborated as well as the Disneyland staff before they had opened to kind of retrain all of those cast members that they were calling back in an effort to make the same safe return that the Disneyland, uh, Disney World in Florida had made. So it does seem like a step in the right direction, those baby steps to normalcy that we've been talking about as more stuff opens up. But it is kind of a note on the side of positive that we're starting to see some changed wording and uh, relaxing of certain policies in some situations. Just more, it's like, it seems like all the news is just COVID news. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't have much to say about it. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm glad they're moving in the right direction, I guess is all I can say. I think we'll see shorter lines, even though capacity is going to slowly increase but I think people will mistake shorter lines for less people in the park and not the change in the physical guidance. So I think that's kind of the biggest thing we'll see is just, oh, shorter lines, shorter lines, no one's in the park, but it's just not going to be spaced out as much. I think I'm getting there just before the bubble bursts. You might. Yeah, so that's good. <laughs> I want to enjoy those little crowds. They're not going to last much longer. I, don't, I doubt they're going to last past July. The more people get vaccinated, the more they're going to increase for sure between vaccination and masks and social distancing. Yeah, a lot of a lot of cases dropping. Mm -hmm. The numbers are going the right way. So, all right. Well, yeah. any more uh, thoughts on that particular on on those two particular topics that are basically the same thing in a sense? Right. I don't think JPEC knew about well. When they announced about the physical distancing, they hadn't made the announcement from the CDC yet. That was earlier today, and the changes had been made to the website, let's say, two days ago. So, mm. 
I know Universal had peeled back some of their six feet physical distancing guidelines. And so I think maybe Disney was starting to follow and follow suit until this. Yeah. Came out. I think that's what they're doing on purpose. To be honest with you. I don't blame them either. Universal tested out first. It's like, well, Universal's <laughs> doing it and Disney should get on the ball. And it's like, should they? Or should they just sit back mm-hmm. and say, let's see how this goes. Go ahead, and then answer. no one's going to remember that we did it second a year, a year from now, a month from now. So let's do it after a month or so and see what happens. And if everything works out, then we'll go. Yeah. If they get a mess on their hands over there, then we don't, you know, we can, we can play the, the whole, well, we didn't, we didn't jump to conclusions card. So I think they played it smart. Mm-hmm. All right. We're getting out of here. Um, same time, same bat time, same bat channel next week. Um, we will talk to everybody on, actually, we have a special episode on Tuesday, so we won't be in our, our, our normal format on Tuesday, but the podcast will be there for your enjoyment, and uh, we will talk to you guys soon enough. Have a good week, everyone.